So if you guys remember last episode, I was super hyped to have the car back uh, get reverse and all that stuff. And I remember saying something like this. The car wouldn't go into gear, but we got it done. It goes into gear. It goes in smooth now. Um, and a couple days later, a couple days have passed since we did the swap, and it still goes into gear smoothly. Well, after I filmed that video, I went up to go edit it, upload the footage, started editing, and I was like, oh, I should probably pull the car back out of the garage so my parents can park in here. And it doesn't want to go into gear. Same issue we were having that night, or really that morning at like 2 in the morning. Had to pump the clutch probably about five or six times to get it to go into gear. Parked it back in the driveway, and I wasn't too happy about that. But I went to go start it today. The clutch was completely soft, went straight to the floor, couldn't get into gear, took about probably 10 pumps to get it in. So I've decided to go out, get a new clutch master cylinder, clutch slave cylinder, and a clutch line. So we are going to do that today. Hopefully this should solve the issue of the boo-boo clutch. I was too hyped last video. I was too hyped. I flew too close to the sun. on two separate tracks, each one giving special emphasis to certain sections of the orchestra, as heard from those positions. Now, when played back simultaneously on two separate systems, the sounds are blended together to achieve a new dimension in sound impossible to obtain in a monolo recording. All right, so as you guys notice, it is light out again. How did I do that? Is it an editing trick? No, it's the next day. I worked on the master cylinder for probably about three hours without filming a single second because I was stuck on literally one bolt. So how the master cylinder bolts onto the car is it's on the firewall. So you have to go under the dash, up the firewall, and then there's two 12 millimeter bolts. But the issue is, is that they have these long studs on them and there's not a lot of room. So you need a deep well socket but you don't have that much room. So actually today I had to go out and buy two tools. So I bought, this is a one fourth drive swivel socket for the one fourth um, and then a one fourth drive breaker bar. So the reason I did a breaker bar uh, is because you can see how thin it is compared to my ratchet, so this was good. I do have a one force drive ratchet, which I could have used, but I didn't have the swivel socket for it, so I had to use the bigger for the swivel socket, so now I got the small swivel socket and the small breaker bar, and this broke it loose, uh, and then I used the small swivel socket with a deep well 12 millimeter socket to actually fully get the bolt out. So that has been the most aggravating thing to get out ever, but I think we should be good from here on out. So with the new clutch master and slave cylinder and clutch line in the car, I finally started it up and it still lost pressure. So I decided to take it to Red Mist Automotive and I broke down. As you can see here in the picture, I was just on a road in Elgin, Illinois on my way actually to review a car, but then I was planning on taking the FB to the shop anyway after the review. And as soon as I was pulling up to do the review, the clutch master ran completely dry now how i fixed this was i had all my tools with me i had brake fluid with me luckily and so i learned how to bleed the clutch i filled it back up bled the clutch on my own by shoving a tripod in between the clutch pedal and the seat i would pump up the clutch shove the tripod in between the clutch pedal and the seat bleed it then run back in 
pump it up more, shove the tripod between the pedal and seat, and keep doing that. That ended up getting me to the shop. Now, Adam took a look at it and, of course, immediately knew that there was no washer on the slave cylinder. I looked around. I couldn't find a washer that came with the slave cylinder. I might have misplaced it. I'm not sure, but I couldn't find one. And so Adam put a washer on the slave cylinder. I pumped it back up. We did the stuff and now it is running great. I also did an oil change. I'll show the stuff here. It's a Valvoline 20W50 and a K&N filter. I will put those parts numbers at the end of the video as well. All right, guys, so it is, as you can tell, it is April 15th, and there is a bunch of snow on the ground. I hate the Midwest with a passion. But a couple things before we end the video. Um, so we do have the master and slave cylinder in the car. I will leave part numbers at the end of the video. I just picked them up from O'Reilly's because I needed it. Um, last minute but that is it for the video and the reason why this is a shorter video is because I don't think I'm actually gonna be doing much to the car because I'm super busy this coming weekend hopefully a track day with Adam um, I'm not taking well I might bring the FB I might drive it there but I'm not tracking it um, so I should be making a vlog or video about Adam's track day as long as it doesn't rain it might rain um, unfortunately so look out for that also speaking of Adam huge shout out to Adam he has lost a ton of weight I don't know if you guys have noticed but it is absolutely amazing the dude looks good and thank you Adam so much for fixing the slave cylinder as I said uh, what ended up happening was there was not a copper I believe it's copper washer in between um, the clutch line and the slave cylinder so every time we put the clutch in it would shove fluid out of the car I just realized on video I look really homeless this morning huh I got my sweet Atkins shirt on but I look homeless <laughs> other than that so uh, super busy because uh, next weekend I will be at the track day and then the weekend after that I have a whole event with my girlfriend so that whole weekend is shot. So we're not gonna be doing anything to the FB for probably at least two weeks. Slight chance it might change, but probably two weeks. But after that, in May, end of May, there is a meet, uh, the Nostalgic Car Meet in Chicago. I think it's actually closer to Rosemont, but I will put the information up on the screen. I will be there. You guys should definitely come check it out. It's not only old Mazdas, although I know a lot of old Mazdas are coming. We're a big group that always shows up, but there's old Nissans. Uh, there's a couple AE86s that come, an LS swapped AE86 usually comes. Um, there's a bunch of old, you know, R32s that show up, a bunch of cool stuff. It's one of my favorite meets. Last year, if you guys remember, my fuel pump broke uh, on the way to the meet. That was that whole video. Um, so I'm going to that again. I believe it is May 26th, but that information will be up on the screen because I will look it up in post. But I think that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about changing out the master or slave cylinder, leave it in the comment section down below. I'll try to help you out as best I can. But that is the update on the RX-7. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. I, I, I